Okay, so um, I decided to do my lesson on uh, the chain rule because I find it kind of the most interesting type of derivative when you're just like kind of chaining things together to take uh, the derivative of. So what I would start off with, sorry, let me turn this, is I would start off with just talking about like what is a composite function and then like how do we find that. So like if we're trying to find like f of g of x, okay, I would talk about more specifically like, okay, you plug in the function function of g of x into f of x and I would connect that with like kind of okay when we take the derivative of something we have to first take the derivative of g of x and then f of x um so, or I'm sorry the other way f of x and then take the derivative of g of x okay so then I would talk about that would be kind of my warm-up I would merge into what is the chain rule so I would talk about okay if you are taking the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x you have to go from the outside in and only do one part at a time so like I would start with taking the derivative of f of x and then keeping g of x alone but it's like a chain you're like kind of putting them together when I'm of putting things together and being of multiplying by the inside of g of x and so i would just talk about like okay you're working from outside in and you have to multiply all those parts together so then what i would do is i would go through a couple of um examples like so i would have one where it's like talking just like purely like just the algebra part so if I was to take the derivative of this, I would say, okay, dealing with this 4 first, I would power that down, leave what's in the parentheses alone, and then mold, and then subtract from 1 from the power, like we've done before, which is 3, and then multiply by the derivative of this inside, which would be 2x. I would say you can leave it like that, or you can simplify whatever um, the students preferred. Okay. Next, I would have them like, okay, if we have like a square root function, we want to think about like, what is that the same thing as? It's 4x minus 3 raised to the power of 1 half. And so I would do the same thing as before. I would just power it down. So power the 1 half down. Leave the inside of the parentheses alone because that's what my like g of x function is. Subtract 1 from 1 half, you get negative 1 half. Then multiply by the inside of this. So then our the derivative of the inside, which would be 4. Okay, and then just simplify, you would get g prime of x. They simplify, you can multiply half times 4, which is 2. And then you're left with uh, 4x minus 3 raised to the negative 1 half. Okay. The next part I would introduce is some trig functions. So, like, if you have sine squared of 5x, you, I would say, okay, what's another way to rewrite this? It would be a sine of 5x raised to the square. And so what I would do is I would say, okay, it's the same idea, just now we have a trig function that we're going to take the derivative of the inside with. So then h prime of x, okay, power down, you would have 2 times, leave the inside of the parentheses alone, sine of 5x, okay? Uh, it would be raised to the power of 1, so they could add that. Then I would multiply by the derivative of the inside. Now, this has another chain rule. So you first have to take the derivative of just sine, which would be cosine of 5x. But then I would say, okay, even further, you have to take the derivative of 5x, which is just 5. Okay. Oh, I shouldn't put that like underneath like that. be 5 over here. Okay. And so simplifying that, h prime of x, it would be, I would say, uh, 10, 2 times 5, sine of 5x, cosine of 5x, like that. Mm. Uh, the next part I would move on to is just like natural logs. So what would I do if I had that? Well, I would just simply take the derivative of natural log first. So this would be y prime. You get 1 over x cubed. 1 over x, but x is x cubed in this case. And so then I would take the derivative of the inside of the parentheses, which would be 3x squared. Um, yeah, uh, this was just a repeat, okay? And then finally, I would talk about, okay, what if you have like a quotient or a product that's inside the parentheses? That's when you would have to use quotient rule or product rule, depending on what you were given. So in this case, you would have f prime of x, power the 3 down first, keep the inside alone. You would have 3 t squared plus 1 over 2t minus 5 raised to the 2 because that's 3 minus 1. And then I would have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So this would be quotient rule. Okay. And so when I did that, I would do the bottom, the derivative of the, or no, just the bottom, 2x, 2t minus 5 
times the derivative of the top, which would be 2t, okay, and then minus the derivative, or the top, t squared plus 1, times the derivative of bottom, uh, 2, and then all over 2t minus 5. And I'm going to ask the students to leave it like this so I can see each and one, each part. We can then talk about, like, okay, what if we have, like, we have to find a specific uh, point or a specific slope, I should say. Um, so in this case, I would have g prime of x, which would be starting off with, uh, this would actually be product rule because you're multiplying. So when I do that, that one's a little trickier. Um, you would have uh, you would have the derivative, and then I would just explain. I'm not going to do it right now because it would take a little longer. Plugging in uh, uh, negative 3 for x, and then finding what that value is. So just adding on to one more part. The last part I would cover is just like, okay, how do I use a table for this? Because I think it's important to know different methods of like, how do you find the derivative, okay? So when I do that, okay, it's asking you to find f of four. You first have to find f prime of x. So in each one of these, I would start off with f prime of x. For that first one, I would power this out. I would say to the students, it's the same thing as before. We're just now using, um, g of x versus like an expression okay so you have two times g of x raised to the one you could leave it as that but then multiply by g prime of x the derivative of the inside and so from there what i would do is i would if i'm trying to find f prime of two i would really be finding two times g of two times g prime of two so then i would say look at the table okay you're looking at okay uh Oh, is it? I'm sorry. Wrong number. That's why I was confused. It, you're trying to find f of 4. <laughs> and so you're finding g of 4 and g prime of 4. Okay. So then looking at the table, I'm just going to 4. 4 for g prime is 3. So I would replace that with a 3. And then g prime of 4, I would go to g prime and then 4. That would be negative 2. And so I'm multiplying 2 times 3 is 6 times 2 is negative 12. And that would be your final answer. So then I would have the students do the other two, um, just practicing with that, uh, just to show you. And then I would go through it. So like if I went through this problem, I would say, okay, f prime of x, this is the same thing as h of x raised to the 1 half. So I would power it down 1 half, leave the inside alone, h of x raised to the negative 1 half. Okay and then multiply by h prime of x, okay? The derivative of the inside. Um, and then finding f prime of four, you're using the same uh, x value, so it's gonna be h of four raised to the negative one half times h prime of four, okay? And so when I do that, okay, uh, I would go back up to my table, and I would say, okay, h, prime, h of four, is going to be 9, but then if I'm taking 9 to the one, uh, 1 half, it's really taking like the square root of 9, but then bringing it to the denominator, that would be 1 third. Okay? And then finally, from there, h prime of 4 would be uh, 5. So then multiplying two ti 1 half times uh, 1 third is 1 sixth times 5, you get 5 six. And so that's just an example of how to use the table. Um, so that's kind of the lesson I would go through. What I would ask the students to do is that I have these nine problems for them to work on, and then I would have them jump to 15 through 20. So I would have them do 1 through 9, 15 through 20, just so they get extra practice with that. And then I would, like, kind of end this lesson by saying, like, okay, like, when you're, like, noticing, like, multiple parts in one, it's like you're chaining together by multiplying. So that's why it's called the chain rule. Um, you can't take all the derivatives all at once. You have to do it individually by parts. And I think that's the most important thing of the lesson because otherwise um, I would say, like, you're jumping the gun. Yeah, but that would be my lesson for uh, – Chapter 3, and thank you.